Well, welcome everybody. This is 100 Visions Guy. You can also call me 100 Visions Dude. And uh, what I'd like to do today is do the WordPress famous five minute install in under 15 minutes. Uh, of course, it's going to take longer because I'm explaining it. Sorry about that. You are going to need some things before you begin. You want to make sure you have a good text editor. You want to make sure you have access to the internet. That's always good. You're going to need a host. So you're going to need some place where you can host your WordPress site. And so I'm, I'm going to assume that you can get that. And there's lots of places. HostGator, GoDaddy, um, Bluehost, uh, a bunch of them. Those are three really top names. You might want to look at them. They usually charge about three, four dollars a month for the cheaper plan. And so with a plan like that, they're going to try to get you set up with an FTP account. So you're also going to need FTP. You're going to need a program that can connect with it. And uh, you're going to need to have some information about your account in order to do this. I'm going to assume you can get this information and then you just don't need to work. You just don't know what to do next. Uh, first thing, I like to install everything manually and get used to doing it that way. So if you go to WordPress.org, by the way, WordPress.org, uh, WordPress is one of my favorite content management systems. It used to be called a, just a blog system, but really it's so much more than that. And so you want to get the WordPress downloaded. So you just want to click on the download WordPress 4.0. Um, I'm just going to show you using zip, although you can get the tarball. And you, if you've got a program that can uh, extract these files, you can get it in that form. And it's going to want to download it. And you see that little green circle there? You wait till it's all officially downloaded. And uh, once it's official, it's in there. We're going to open it up. We're going to extract it. And we're going to do some setup there. So I'll show you how to do that. In the meanwhile, um, I like to use FileZilla. And uh, FileZilla is an FTP client. And they have one where you can set up servers and clients. I am going to cancel, disconnect, um, and show you how I set that up in just a moment. Um, so there's uh, FileZilla. OK, we're still waiting for that download to go. So while we're waiting here, let me show you how to set up FileZilla. If I click on here, I've got a lot of list of different sites. Okay, and so what you want to do is if it's the very first time you use FileZilla, by the way, that's free. Everything I'm showing you is free except for the host. Um, this is where you're going to set up a connection to a site. And right here I created one called My WordPress Site. And so you're going to want to create a new site. You're going to want to name it. Um, and so since we're just doing a generic one, we're going to use that as the name. Um, you will want to make sure you set up the host. It's usually going to be whatever website domain name that you have where you're going to be connecting. You put it just in ftp.chsweb.org in this case, um, which is our uh, high school technology website. And uh, on here we have things like protocol. Um, and we're just using plain FTP. It's not a secure, a secure FTP. And you might want to consider doing that. Um, I just want to go over the main thing here. Um, I like to have it ask for a password so that someone else who, you know, if I leave this uh, logged on or something and they come in there, they, they can't just, you know, connect and uh, have access to my folder. Okay, so uh, you want to, so I put in the username there and uh, then I would click OK uh, to save your changes. Other thing you might want to be aware of is under advanced, you can set where the default local directory is going to be. So where are you going to have your files that you're going to work on? Once you figure that out, you definitely want to set that as the default. And then sometimes when you connect through FTP, this is going to connect you to the server where the live website is going to be. You might want to set this uh, remote directory up. And you know, we'll wait till later. If you, if you do anything where you want to work on it, you can set that up. For now, we're just going to leave that alone. Um, at this point, I'm going to go back here. Is it done downloading? So I'm going to click on here. I want to show in the folder. And then I'm just going to right click on that and I'm going to choose Extract All. And I'm just going to extract right to the folder. I want it to show the files when complete. So I click Extract. And let's go back to the FTP to talk about it. So while that's extracting, we go back here WordPress site, General. I'm going to click on Connect. Now, if I don't click Connect, you can choose the down arrow here and choose it from there. So we're going to go ahead and test that out. Let me try my, my password. Okay, I just tried in my password and it failed. So usually what happens is when you're an FTP, if you make a successful connection, it almost instantaneously finds it. You don't have to wait. If you're waiting, it's usually a bad sign. So I'm going to do this again and try to connect one more time, making sure I get the right password. And uh, 
And I might have to try a few passwords until I get it right. This is one of the problems with asking for the password. You want to make sure that you get the password done correctly. Okay, um, I got connected successfully. One of the ways you know is you want to look over here. You should see at some point status directory listings successful. And uh, you may or may not see some folders in the remote site. Mine, um, I have connection to a lot of other sites here, so you can see those there. But you should see a little dot, dot, and empty directory listing. Uh, hopefully that WordPress site has complete, completed its um, uh, extraction. And so, uh, yeah, there it is. So at this point, now, um, this is the WordPress 4.0, and this is the latest version of WordPress. Uh, by the time you watch this, we'll probably be at 4.1 to 4.3 or whatever. Uh, either way, um, what we want to do is we want to navigate to the WordPress folder, and you want to see the contents of that folder. It's right there. So we're going to copy the uh, path right here, and I'm going to paste it into there. So, and I'm going to hit Enter. And that's going to show me these files. And so while we're doing configuration, I'm going to upload these files. So I want to select everything in there. So I'm going to choose Control A, I'm going to right click and upload. Now, we're not quite ready uh, to, the, the site won't install just by doing it that way. Um, the other thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to create a database and get a database created. And so there's a lot of different tools to do that. One is called PHP My Admin, and if you get an account with a host like GoDaddy or something like that, they will give you an opportunity to do that. Let me show you an example of where I get that set up. Um, here is my host. I want to go to databases. I click here. I go to MySQL, and it should give me an option here to add a database. So I can click on it. I can give it a name. And the things you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to make sure that in this case, um, in GoDaddy, they make the database name and the database username be the same right there. And then you're going to have to come up with a password that matches the criteria that your host sets up for you. Um, I always use the latest version of MySQL, whatever they have, and I always hope for the latest. And so I would set that up here and do it that way. Um, other ways you might do it is you might see the PHP My Admin. Let me cancel that so hopefully you can see that. Um, PHP My Admin should be down somewhere along here. I've got MySQL. Uh, I click here. Well, again, it's the same thing, but there's different ways to set it up. Um, I'm really focusing on the install. Once you have it set up, and you can see right here, I'm trying to transfer. It's like 1,500 files, and it's still got some queued up. What we're going to do is we're going to open up the folder that has WordPress in there. That's this folder here. And I'm looking for a file that says WP config sample. And I want to edit that. And you can edit it with uh, whatever your editor is. You can right click and usually editor will open up uh, Notepad, for example. I like Notepad++, so I'm going to open it with it. And you're going to see my window, and there's going to be a lot of information about this. It says it's the base configurations of the WordPress. Well, this file gets executed once and once only for your site. And so when, if you do it correctly, if you have to fix it, then it's going to run it again. Um, but once you install and you use this file and it gets used correctly, it will install your, your site and you won't have to mess with this file again unless, for example, you need to find out what was your password to the database or whatever. So you're going to need to get the name of the database you're going to have to know what the username is, what your password is, and then what the local host is. Now, um, for security's sake, I'm going to blur those out. Uh, but like I said, you, you get that information from your host and set that up. So you're going to want to go in there and set it up. Let me pause this while I go set mine up. By the way, remember I told you uh, PHP My Admin, that's what it looks like. You'd actually go log in here. I'll log in and show you. The login is going to be the, 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 the database username, database password. Um, and then what you should do is if you get into PHP MyAdmin, you can actually create a database from here and configure it there. So um, anyways, that's where you could set this up, and that's what you would see. Uh, okay, but we don't need that at this point. We're going to go ahead and set up the next part here. And um, so I have everything set up. I just need to get the host. And in some cases, the host, let's go back to that, is going to be localhost. In many WordPress setups, you don't even have to change it. You just leave it as it is. Um, in the case of GoDaddy, they changed that, so I need to make sure I get those details.
Using the magic of blurred technology, I've got the host information here. I just clicked on database details and it gave me this information. It gave me the host, so all I have to do is go down there, copy. I can close it. I can go back here and then I can paste it in. Hopefully we got it all blurred. And then I want to save. Now here comes the big change here, guys. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to save this, but not save it as WP config sample. You're going to do a save as and save it as WP config. Oops, okay, that was an accident. That was my uh, keyboard. My hand was hovering over the keypad, and so I did that. All right, so you want to save it as WP config.php, save your changes. Go back to FileZilla, everything is uploaded, so I'm good to go. Now, sometimes you, uh oh, I didn't want to do that. Hold on a second, let me stop the queue. All right, stop it. Okay, WP, no, I can't see it. All I see over here is WP config sample. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna hit refresh and I can hit the refresh key or I can click this. And suddenly now I see WP config. So I'm gonna double click to upload it. It just got uploaded. And then, oh, the last thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need um, to figure out where your site is hosted. Mine actually got set up in a, what's called a subdomain. And um, you're just going to need to know where are you putting your, your, your file. In my case, it's a subdomain. And so it's actually going to be teacherp3.chsweb.org. Okay. So you might, yours might just, if you pay for the domain name and you want to put it right in there, you know, you would get the FTP and you just drop it in the main folder. If you have subdomains and you want to set up other people's websites, you set up a subdomain, you choose the folder and then you can connect to it. So the very first time you want to go here, if you've uploaded everything, including WP config, you just hit enter. And it should walk you through the setup for your WordPress site. And there it is. So we have English, we can set the language that we want. And so um, seeing as I'm a Yank, I'll put down English United States and click continue. And that's a good sign. If you see this, you're good to go. Um, teacher, WordPress sample, and I already had one for my other class. I'll do it for this class. And then you're going to want to set up a username. Now, if you use usernames like admin, um, that's something people could guess. Um, some people might have one called dev or developer or whatever. You choose one, and then, wow, it already likes that whatever password that was. I don't even know what it was. So I'm going to go ahead and set one. Medium, okay, let me change this a little bit. And then I'm going to add one little piece at the end just to make it a little bit stronger. Uh, do set your email on there so that you can, uh, if you lose your password, you can get it reset. Um, only if you're ready to have your site live to the public do you want to check this. I'm not going to check that. We can change it later. When we think we got it, we click install WordPress. And at this point, it says success. Um, we're not in the WordPress site, so we have to log in. So you want to go to the last step. Um, did it remember my password correctly? If it did, no, it didn't. So. Log in. Was it successful? Takes a while. We get to the dashboard. Hey, we're good to go. And I did it under 15 minutes. Thank you very much. Good luck with your WordPress development.